Hey guys, Sark here from Sark e Tech, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be comparing the Google Pixel 6 Pro to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. These are the latest and greatest phones from two titans. Now I do wanna let you know that we are not gonna be able to go into the full details because there's an embargo on the Pixel 6 Pro that's gonna be lifted on the 25th. So this is gonna be an initial look and comparison of these smartphones. We are gonna look at the design, the hardware, publicly available feature list, and many more details. So let's dive in and get started and let's start with the actual build and the design. Now before that, I wanna quickly put something in perspective. The Google 6 Pro is $900 for a 128 gigabyte model. The iPhone 13 Pro Max is $1,100 for the 128 gigabyte model. So we do have a $200 price difference, and I'm sure many of you guys, I hope, prefer the lower price tag. But anyway, let's look at the design. Now let's start with the rear design. I'll let you know right away, the rear design is gonna be a subjective choice. In my opinion, both of these phones look pretty nice. But the Pixel 6 Pro does bring a new design language to the table. I do like the fact that we have the cameras all in a bar. On the iPhone, we have them in a square. Now, because we have been seeing this kind of design in this phone and many other phones, this one certainly looks like something new in the block. So it does get points for being original. Now, when it comes to the build quality, we have high level components. We have glass on the rear and the front. That's Gorilla Glass 7, Gorilla Glass Victus, and Apple uses their own glass, which is also extremely tough and durable front and back. The big difference is this is gonna be a shiny finish and that's gonna be a matte finish. And I do prefer matte over shine, but if you get the proper color like this one, you're not gonna have to worry about the fingerprint smudges. The iPhone does have stainless steel construction around the edges, so it's slightly better in overall build quality, but nothing dramatic. Now, when you look at the front of these devices, that's where we have a big difference in design language. This one here simply looks like it's from the future. This one here with that notch looks like it's from the Stone Ages. We have a large and tall display with a tiny little cutout on the front. We do have smaller bezels, and here I do like the whole bezels, but the knot just gets in the way. So from the front, certainly I prefer the design of the Pixel 6 Pro. But as of now, this one looks more futuristic and more compatible with the 21st century. Now one more thing, both of these phones are water resistance with a rating of IP68, and both of these phones have stereo speakers, so that's fantastic. Nice and rich sound while you play videos, play games, or listen to music. All right, so let's do a quick physical tour around the devices. So with the Google Pixel, at the bottom we have USB Type-C, we have stereo speakers. On this side we have the power button and the volume rocker. Uh, on the top, we have one microphone. Now total, this guy has three microphones and we are gonna be talking about the cameras in a little bit. The SIM card tray is gonna be on this side and that's basically all we have uh, around the phone. Very good looking phone. Now the iPhone here, again, a very good looking phone. Uh, on the side, we have a power button right here. On this side, volume rocker, the mute button, the SIM card tray, at the bottom, the lightning port, stereo speakers, on the top, nothing. And we'll look at the cameras in a little bit. Now the overall feel of these phones in the hand is similar. Feels like a million dollars. Let's take a look at this one. Feels like a million dollars. Now I'll let you know one thing, because we do have straight edges, but here we have curved edges. It's a little bit more easy to handle this one. And it's just a little bit lighter than the iPhone. The, the iPhone is 240 grams, this is 210 grams. To me, that's not a huge deal, but if you hold it in your hands, you are gonna feel it's gonna be a little bit more hefty. In my case, I don't care. Actually, when the phone is a little bit heavier, I like it even more. For some reason, makes it feel more expensive. But most people don't care about 30 grams. Another thing, iPhone is a little bit shorter, a little bit thinner, but a little bit wider. But both of these phones are large phones, and if you're used to large phones, if you're okay with those, you're gonna be quite home with either one of these guys. Now let's quickly talk about the display. Both phones have a 6.7 inch display. Both phones have a 120 hertz display refresh rate. Both phones have high resolution, but the Google Pixel Pro does have more pixels. 
is slightly sharper and has a slightly higher resolution. But for now, those are simply the specs. And of course, both phones do support HDR. Again, this one is gonna be a little bit more immersive in my opinion. We do have a small obstruction, while on this one, we have a larger obstruction. I mean, this notch gotta be at least 10 times larger than that hole, and that's a problem. Now, let's quickly talk about the performance. So, the Google now has their own custom chip, the Tensor chip, which is designed to work perfectly with all of Google's experiences built into this phone, such as the Google Assistant, the Google Translation features, and all that. Now, this one here has an A15 Bionic chip. It is the most powerful chip on the market. Even though I cannot go into the details, I can let you know right now when it comes to benchmarks, the Tensor is not gonna be able to beat the A15. You are getting more raw horsepower on the iPhone, but we'll talk about that in more detail in a future video. Beyond that, we have 12 gigabytes of RAM, six gigabytes of RAM, 120 gigabytes internal storage to start, same over here, no micro SD expansion in neither phone, and that's that. Let's move on and quickly talk about the cameras. All right, so let's quickly talk about the camera specs. So both of these phones come with a triple camera system. Now with the iPhone, we have 12 megapixels, 12 megapixels, and 12 megapixels for the wide telephoto and ultra wide. And we do have three times optical zoom with the telephoto camera. Now with the Pixel, we have a 50 megapixel wide angle, a 48 megapixel telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and the telephoto is gonna get you four times optical zoom. Both phones are able to record at 4K at 60 frames per second. We are gonna be showing you guys some camera samples in the full comparison coming in a few days. So we'll see what that is all about. Now I do wanna quickly talk about the battery. So when it comes to the battery, the iPhone has an amazing battery life, no question about that. We have not tested the Pixel yet, but the Pixel has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is larger than the iPhone. And of course, both phones have fast charging, but the Pixel is gonna be a little bit faster when it comes to faster charging. But they both have wireless charging. However, the iPhone does not have reverse wireless charging, but the Pixel has it, so you can use the back of the Pixel to charge other devices, while on the iPhone, you cannot. So that's a missing feature on the iPhone in relation to the battery. Now, when it comes to biometrics, the iPhone has the Face ID system and the Pixel Pro has an in-display built-in fingerprint sensor. Personally, I prefer the in-display fingerprint sensor. Simply feels more futuristic. But as far as security is concerned, they're both top level security systems. So that's basically all I want to talk about in this video. We looked at the build, the design, the hardware, the feeling in the hand, and most of the publicly available specs. I do know a lot of you guys want to see these phones side by side, so that's why this video was made. Make sure to subscribe to see the full review comparison, which is gonna also give you a conclusion in this video we are concluding nothing, but we will very soon. So any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button, and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.